Hello and welcome to this video on motion graphs, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at understanding how to graph motion. So if we've been successful and we've learned in this lesson, we should be able to describe the distance time and velocity time graphs, understand how to calculate values from distance time graphs and velocity time graphs, and then actually calculate different values from distance time graphs and velocity time graphs. So this links into the following part of the AQAA level physics specification 3.4.1.3 motion along a straight line so if an object moves along a straight line the distance travel can be represented by a distance time graph this is a graph that plots the distance on the vertical axis and the time on the horizontal axis as shown below now the speed of an object can be calculated from the gradient of a distance time graph because the gradient is the change in y over the change in x so in this case it will be the distance divided by the time which is going to be the speed now when calculating the gradient always draw a gradient triangle as it shows the values that you're using Using, and your gradient triangle should be as large as possible as the greater the range of values used the more reliable the result however this method can only be used if an object has a constant speed it makes a straight line the best fit now if an object has a changing speed it's accelerating or it's decelerating the line of a distance time graph will be curving so if an object is accelerating, its speed at a particular time can be determined by drawing a tangent and measuring the gradient of the distance time graph at that time. Now a tangent is a straight line that touches a curve at a point, but if extended does not cross it at that point. So for example, this would be the tangent at 10 seconds. So to work out the gradient of a tangent, you would draw a gradient triangle on the tangent and then repeat the same calculation as previous. So here are the following sections on a distance time graph and what they show. Now it's important to note you cannot go down on a distance time graph because you can never decrease your distance travelled as it's a scalar. So this particular section shows an object moving at constant speed. This section shows an object which is stationary. This section shows an object which is accelerating. And this section shows an object which is decelerating. Now as mentioned before, on a distance time graph the line can never go downwards because the distance travelled is a scalar the quantity. Now distance is how far an object moves so therefore it cannot decrease in the journey. Now displacement includes both the distance an object moves measured in a straight line from the start point to the end point and the direction of that straight line. Now displacement is a vector quantity. So if a distance time graph shows a line going downwards or is negative it can actually will be a displacement time graph. So there is a clear difference between the distance traveled by an object and the object's displacement. Distance travelled is a scalar quantity, it's a measure of the total length you have moved, whilst displacement is a vector quantity, it's a measure of, how the, of the straight line distance from the starting position. Both of these values are measured in metres, now distance is given the symbol D and displacement is given the symbol S. Now displacement can be expressed in terms of a magnitude and a direction. Now the direction can be given as either a plus value or a negative value. Now this leads into the concept of velocity and speed. So the velocity of an object is its speed in a given direction. Velocity is a vector quantity, and velocity is the rate of change in displacement of an object. And we can represent the velocity's direction with a positive or negative sign, and velocity is the change in displacement over the change in time. By contrast, speed is a scalar quantity. Speed is the rate of change in distance of an object, with speed being the change in distance travelled divided by the change in time. Time. Now speed does not have a direction so must always be a positive value. So velocity is the speed of an object with the direction or you can say it's the change in displacement. Now any quantity in physics with a direction we know is called a vector and we can illustrate the velocity by either stating the direction of travel or with a plus or negative sign. Now if an object is moving in a circle it can have a constant speed but it must have a changing velocity because velocity is a speed in a given direction. So if an object is moving in a circle then it's changing direction which therefore means it is changing velocity so our object is accelerating. Now we can show how the velocity changes in a journey with the velocity time graph. Here the velocity is placed on the y-axis and the time is placed on the x-axis as shown below. Now the gradient is the change in the y divided by the change in the x which is the change in velocity divided by the change in the time which is known as our acceleration. So the gradient of the line in a velocity time graph is the acceleration. Now if an object is changing its rate of acceleration the line of the velocity time graph will be curving. So 
if an object is changing its rate of acceleration, its acceleration at any particular time can be determined by drawing a tangent and measuring the gradient of the velocity time graph at that time. So again, our tangent is a straight line that touches the curve at a point, but if extended, does not cross at that point. So to work out the gradient of the tangent, you draw the gradient triangle on the tangent and repeat the same calculation as previous. So we know the following sections on the velocity time graph represent the following types of motion. So you can see on the green section, it's a constant acceleration. So if a line has a constant gradient upwards, it must be constantly increasing its velocity so the object has a constant acceleration. Here, our line is flat, but the velocity is not changing. This main means that it's maintaining the same velocity. Now, if the line is flat and stationary, it will only happen if the flat line is along the x-axis because you'll have a constant velocity of zero. Now, if a line has a constant gradient downwards, it must be constantly decreasing its velocity so the object has constant deceleration. Now if an object, so if the line is below the x-axis it means the object has a negative velocity. So a negative in a vector means the object is traveling in the opposite direction. So we have constant acceleration in the opposite direction. Now if you calculate the acceleration of an object and it's negative it could either be deceleration or it could be acceleration in the opposite direction. So to work out which one it is you must interpret the velocity time graph or look at the object's motion. So you can see here the different sections of a velocity time graph. Now it's important to note the area under a graph is always the y-axis value multiplied by the x-axis. So in this case it's the velocity times by the time. Now velocity times by time is the displacement or the distance travelled. So for the area under the graph to calculate the displacement you must treat the area under the negative section of the graph below the um, x-axis as a negative. Now for the area under the graph to calculate the distance travelled you must treat the area under the negative section of the graph under the x-axis as a positive value. So here are the following sections on the velocity time graph and what they show when considering curve and lines. So this shows an object with constant acceleration. This shows that's constant velocity. This shows that the object's increased in its rate of acceleration. And this shows the object is decreased in its rate of acceleration. Now, unlike on a distance time graph, the line can be drawn downwards as the velocity can decrease in the journey. Now, unlike the distance time graph, the line can be drawn below the x-axis because it indicates the object is moving in the opposite direction. Now finally, an acceleration time graph plots the acceleration on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis, as shown below. Now a positive acceleration means the object is speeding up, the negative acceleration means the object is slowing down, and if the acceleration is zero, then the object is moving with a constant velocity. So a straight horizontal line will show a uniform acceleration or deceleration. So if we look at this particular acceleration time graph, we can see the following sections. The blue section here shows a constant acceleration. The red section shows no acceleration and the purple section shows constant deceleration. Now a negative gradient shows that our rate of acceleration is decreasing and a positive gradient shows our rate of acceleration is increasing. Now a curving line shows the rate of acceleration is changing. So a curving line upwards shows the rate of acceleration is increasing and a curving line downwards shows the rate of acceleration is decreasing. Now remember we said the area under the graph is the y-axis multiplied by the x-axis. So in this case it's the acceleration multiplied by the time, which gives us our velocity. So the area under the graph for an acceleration time graph is the velocity. So if we want to find the overall change in the velocity on a graph with both acceleration and deceleration, you'll have to treat the area under the time axis as a negative. So to summarise what we've looked at in today's lesson, we understand representations by graphical methods of both uniform and non-uniform acceleration. The significance of the areas of the velocity time and the acceleration time graph and the gradients of the displacement time and the velocity time graphs for uniform and non-uniform acceleration and measurements and calculations from displacement time graphs, velocity time graphs and acceleration time graphs. So if we've been successful and we've learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the distance time graph and the velocity time graph, understand how to calculate values from these graphs and then calculate different values from these graphs. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on motion graphs, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.